Hi, and welcome back to Natasha's Journey. This is video number two, Natasha's Family History of Psychic Phenomenon. I want to thank those of you who watched the first video explaining who Natasha is, and in this video I'll talk about how it came about that I have prophetic visions. As a child growing up in mid-America, smack in the Bible Belt, the only experience I'd had with extrasensory perception was when my mother told me that my great-grandmother, Evelina Bricker Brown, knew when things were going to happen. Grandma Eva passed away when I was two years old, so I had no memory of her. During the initial time period that I began having visions, it was my Grandma Eva who reached out to me with messages. I was living on Oahu in Waikiki Beach, and on my way home from work, I drove by a bookstore that had a placard in the front announcing that a psychic fair was going on. I had never experienced a psychic reading before that, but I was drawn in by the sign to see what it was about. During the session, the psychic told me that an entity from my mother's side of the family wanted to speak. She carried a white rose. Initially, I wasn't sure who it was, but by the end of the session, she identified herself as my great-grandmother, Evelina Brown. That was the beginning of a multitude of messages that I received from her. And I've pulled together all of the messages and published one of my little books called, this one called, Words of Wisdom from Grandma. A list of my collection of little books is at the end of this video. And e-copies are available if you um, just send me an email. Uh, the following year, my mother sent me a copy of a book that was written by another family member, Virginia Brandt. She was my mother's aunt on her dad's side of the family. The book was titled The Hem of His Garment. I had met Aunt Nina the year before she passed away, but I didn't know much about her except that my mother said she was a preacher. I was amazed at what Aunt Nina had written in her book, The Hem of His Garment. She told the story of her life and focused on the period after the birth of her son when she had been dropped onto the sidewalk on her way home from the hospital after his birth. She suffered a fractured spine and was paralyzed. As a Christian minister, she believed in divine healing, and for a year she prayed to be healed and then the miracles began to happen. On the page where she talked about her father, John Lincoln Brandt, there was a footnote saying that he was listed in Who's Who in America. That sparked curiosity, and I was astounded what I found when searching his name on the internet. I found a page where his name in a thumbnail photo was listed among others, such as Jean Dixon, Nostradamus, Edgar Cayce, and other notable visionary prophets. And there on the page was also listed my great aunt, Virginia Brandt. The title of the page was End, Time, End Times, Prophets, and Seers. There were links to pages and pages of information about both Aunt Nina and my great-grandfather. He was a famous author, lecturer, minister, and world traveler. I will list his bibliography at the end of this video for those interested. Aunt Nina was a famous radio evangelist in the 1920s, and there, was, there were links to all of her sermons called Meditation Moments um, on the, in the Internet. And um, I will put a link to her audio files um, here. So by then it was becoming clear why I was having visions and communicating with my ancestors. They had important messages for me and for the world. The year after I moved back to the mainland from Hawaii, I began receiving messages through a process called automatic writing. In future videos, I'll go into detail about 
various forms of communication that I used to receive these messages. Here I want to explain that my about my skepticism regarding who was really giving me the messages. Um, the concept itself challenged my Christian roots. In addition, I wondered if I was simply saying my own words that I was composing the messages. And were there really messages there from beyond the grave from my ancestors? Or were they answers to prayers given to me by Jesus? All these thoughts cross my mind. Early on, um, I began going to a local shop where they had both psychic sessions and a relaxation experience on what I called a contraption, uh, and it was called the Genesis machine. Uh, the machine was in a soundproof room, and it was attached to a computer that measured and displayed energy in the room. Soothing music played, and always the same music from the CD, The Pleiades, recorded by Gerald J. Marco, which is also the background music to this and all of my videos. One of the first experiences I had on the Genesis machine described an event that would take place two weeks later. While I was on the machine, laying on the bed, and I have a picture here showing what the machine looked like, it felt like I was flying out of my body and seeing scenes and hearing words um, describing what I was experiencing. And I was given the words this first time, amphitheater, concave in shape, built into the sides of a hill, hands of time, and pyramids. At the end of that first vision, I was not aware of the concept of remote viewing, but I knew about out-of-body experiences and that's what it felt like. Uh, later, I attended a workshop on remote viewing, and I discovered the method of training to become a remote viewer. I didn't pursue that course of action after a short wor a weekend workshop, but I do believe the experiences that I was having were similar to remote viewing, but without the blind scientific approach that remote viewing uses. After that particular first ride on the Genesis machine, I wrote down everything I could remember and I drew a sketch of the amphitheater that was described. And here's a sketch of that amphitheater. I was told the words amphitheater, concave in shape, built into the sides of a hill, hands of time, and pyramids. Two weeks later, I was invited by a friend to attend a retreat high above Los Angeles at the top of the San Bernardino Mountains at a camp called Mazumdar. And the following account is from my journal um, on that day. I come to this place on the top of the world, which is a Native American sacred site. My hostess is Ursula, whose husband was a caretaker of this 107 acre camp that was used to be that used to be a spiritual sanctuary the first night when we went for a walk around the grounds i was led to an amp outdoor structure that absolutely shocked me and here's a photo of that outdoor amphitheater i was shocked to see that it was concave structure built into the sides of a hill. It was surrounded by 12 pillars, coinciding with the vision I had of hands of time, and each pillar had a pyramid on top. The whole thing was identical to the vision I had had that I had received while I was on the Genesis machine um, two weeks earlier. The name of the amphitheater was Pillars of God. The miracle served to validate that my visions were real and there was a big message here from God about what direction my life was moving. 
Without any doubt, my purpose was coming into focus. A while back, I searched on Google Earth the term Pillars of God, and much surprisingly, um, it popped up. And uh, it was in the mountains right where I had expected it to be, in uh, San Bernardino Mountains, east of L.A., and it was listed um, as an amphitheater at Camp Mazumdar called Pillars of God. I was um, astonished, but I knew my questions about the validity of my visions were answered. In my next video, I will describe contact with an extraterrestrial spacecraft that we all had seen during that first night while standing at the back of the amphitheater. And this will absolutely blow your mind. Well, thank you for watching, and please leave your comments, uh, subscribe, like, and share. And following our John Lincoln Brandt's bibliography and the list of my inspirational little books, I am Natasha. <laughs>